Hey all, I'm doing a review of a 2015 Aprilia Capanode. Uh, travel pack, that's the only version available in the US other than the more uh, off-road oriented version which they <coughs> brought over recently. Hey all, I'm doing a review of the 2015 Aprilia Capanode travel pack touring type of bike and let's see let's kind of start up front the brakes with Brembo dual discs up front uh, brakes very well as you would expect um, yet fair braking from the rear uh, not as aggressive as you would on say a BMW more kind of like what you would expect on a Ducati um, the brakes work very well easy to modulate with two fingers uh, the only problem or issue I have is I get kind of a harmonic vibration that I, I hear and feel, you know, when you're braking hard and right when you come to a stop at stoplights. So far it hasn't deterred or detracted from the braking performance and I'm not that worried about it because I had a similar kind of situation on a Ducati Hyperstrata. Uh, and they never could figure it out. I never could figure it out. I tried a bunch of stuff, you know, deglaze the rotors, try anti squeal compound, but uh, it never went away. And my guess is it's probably going to be uh, that way on this bike. So as long as it doesn't, uh, you know, hurt the braking performance, I'm not really that worried about it. Okay, let's move up to the headlight. Uh, it's got a setup where you got two lights side by side for your low beam and uh, I'll tell you what these low beams are about as good as a low beam as I've encountered on any stock motorcycle uh, in fact I have some Denali D2's that I put down on the forks for enhanced uh, lighting at night but to tell you the truth they don't even pierce beyond the, uh, the normal low beam so it's kind of actually don't do anything except improve visibility to you know the drivers and riders so the low beams are very good the high beam is kind of weird in that when you turn on the high beam the low beams turn off so now you have a single light that points further down the road you lose a lot of the upfront illumination and I find that it just doesn't do much for me so I probably won't use the high beam very often okay what's next the windscreen what you see here is not the uh, stock windscreen. This is the California Scientific medium height windscreen. The reason I replaced the stock windscreen is the stock windscreen, as far as I'm concerned, shit. <laughs> really, it, it didn't provide much wind protection in the high position or the low position. Uh, it deflected a lot of air at your shoulders and helmet area. Not a lot of buffeting, but a very high airflow. It was actually quite noisy, so replace it with this unit which I run in the middle position and I couldn't be happier it's a it's a really good windscreen okay let's go back to comfort and ergonomics and stuff see that on this thing is fairly tall I think it's like 33 and a half inches or something and when you've got a 29 inch inseam like I do uh, that means I'm doing the tippy toe and having to lean over at stop signs and, and lights um, because I have a 29 inch inseam I'm kind of used to that you know the kind of bikes I like to ride uh, generally all fairly tall so just be prepared for that it is a little tall the seat the seat is very comfortable a lot of room on it for uh, moving forward and back and side to side uh, but there is something about the seat that you need to know and this bike comes installed with a permanent heated seat option, if you get my drift. They could have easily named this thing the Aprilia Dragon because this baby breathes fire at your ass. Like straight up. And it's mostly concentrated in the middle. Uh, slight bias to the right hand side, which is the exhaust side. Um, now, when you're up and moving and underway and in cold weather, uh, it's absolutely not an issue. As a matter of fact, in cold weather, it's, it's actually kind of nice. Um, but I imagine that if you're in stop-and-go situation or you 
you've got a lot of stop lights or a lot of stop signs to deal with and you drive in primarily warm weather uh, you're gonna feel the burn so that's just something to be aware of okay the riding position is really really nice perfectly upright got good wide uh, leverage on the bars easy reach to the bars um, the leg position you know with short legs, I'm kind of on the edge of getting into the cramped area, so if you've got long legs, you'll find easy reach to the ground, but you may be a little bit cramped here in the cockpit area, so that's just something to think about. Uh, as far as the levers, man, the levers, well, I'm not sure who they had in mind when they designed the levers, right? Uh, NBA players freakishly tall people with long appendages but I'll tell you what I could not reach the stock levers on this thing uh, very easily now granted I have little short breakfast sausage fingers right um, and you know that's an issue for me on any bike but on this bike in particular uh, I had a very difficult time reaching the levers uh, for the brake lever it actually prevented me from being able to easily two finger it and the clutch lever, wow, that's a whole different story. The pull on this thing is just freaking ridiculous. I mean, it's like one of those forearm exerciser things that you've seen where you have to squeeze it really hard. It's like having one of those things bolted to your handlebar. Um, not very uh, not very forgiving, so. I ended up looking around and I found some uh, Evo 3 shorty levers, which I got from a company in Australia called Radguard. Uh, they have a little bit more of an L shape to them to start with, so the reach without even using the adjustment is better than stock. It's got six ways of adjustment, and so that's a lot better than stock. So they, uh, they work really nice. Uh, like I said, they have a great fit and finish. And then talk about cost. These things were like $128 for the pair. And if you look around, I mean, a lot of your aftermarket levers cost that much or a lot more just for one lever. So. These levers uh, definitely helped, but if you got short hands, the stock levers on this thing uh, could actually be a showstopper. Okay, other controls are, you know, the mode button on the left, the horn, the blinker, the high beam are all kind of standard fare. On the right hand side, you've got the uh, power switch, which also does the, the modes, you know, the riding modes, and then you've also got the cruise control switch and let me tell you about the cruise control this thing is freaking goofy it's got to be the dumbest cruise control setup on the planet and I kind of show you why they expect you to reach around hold that thing in for three seconds until you get a blinking light on the dashboard a blinking green light and then you have to hold it in for another second and when you let it go, whatever speed you're going is the speed that it controls at. Um, so it's really kind of goofy. Now, once you're up and you've got it activated and it's controlling, it controls very well. It controls very accurately to the speed that you've set and you get to enjoy the benefit of cruise control. However, you cannot increment or decrement up and down in increments like you can on, you know, the BMW for instance or like in your car so the cruise control is there it does work it's effective but setting it up is just it's goofy as hell okay let's talk now about yield instrument cluster pretty nicely thought out and laid out instrument cluster you've got a, a tack bar across the top huge numbers indicating your speed right in the middle uh, you'll never have a, a good reason to get pulled over for speeding. Like on the BMW, the speed indication is analog and so small, you could, you could make a case that you couldn't read it. Not that any officer would buy that, but on this bike, it definitely, uh, that, that rationale wouldn't fly. Uh, you've got a bar graph for fuel. You've also got a bar graph for temperature. And they work pretty well, although the fuel one is not exactly all that accurate. Uh, your shift indicator is pretty large. You got your mode indicator, your mode in the middle, uh, what level of traction control you're on, and all that stuff is uh, 
you know, pretty readable. Your suspension uh, icon is at the far right hand side, and that's pretty legible too. So you uh, use the mode switch here on the left control for indexing through the various modes. I keep it in trip mode pretty much all the time. And the reason I keep it in trip mode is because the bar graph for the fuel is just not that accurate. I think like the last bar might go anywhere from 30 to 70 miles from my experience. So I just use the uh, trip trip meter to know how much gas I have left. And it leads us into fuel economy. Now, conceivably you could be going 80, 85 or so, um, and if you're doing that, you might be getting somewhere in the 37 to 38 miles per gallon range. Uh, if you keep it, you know, below 70, 60 to 65, uh, I've gotten as high as uh, 40 miles to the gallon. Actually, I've gotten that pretty regularly. So the fuel economy is uh, okay. It does have the three uh, riding modes, you know, sport, like a touring or city mode, and it's got a rain mode. I try not to drive in the rain, so I don't use the rain mode all that often. And the touring mode is just kind of, eh, kind of boring, so I just keep it in the sport mode. But there is a fairly significant difference amongst the three modes. Uh, it does have three levels of traction control and ABS. And the way I ride, I have yet to cause an intervention on my behalf. Uh, it's nice to know that they're there. Uh, but even better, in my opinion, to know that I haven't had to use them. So hopefully, if need be, I'll, you know they'll come in to play if I have to use them and shoot here we've entered into the splitting zone okay so now I have to concentrate a little bit more on what I'm doing here so uh, you can split pretty well on this bike by the way uh, it's you know not too wide um, you know kind of like any other adventure bike I'd imagine all right so what else is there to talk about? Uh, I already talked about gas mileage, which is just okay. Okay, um, how does this thing ride? Um, you know, it is tall and it is very heavy. I think it's over 600 pounds. So it's not your, you know, ride around town sort of bike. Um, and because it's gear tall, first of all, it's hard to get out of third gear in town and, and be legal. Uh, when it comes to the freeway though, the weight and the tall gearing are actually uh, a significant advantage. Uh, this bike is not easily pushed around by even, you know, fairly strong winds compared to the other bikes I've ridden on in the past. Um, and the tall gearing makes it so that you could conceivably drive around 80, 85 or higher and not be pushing too many RPMs. So. As far as handling, uh, I've let it, you know, a lot of reports say that this bike handles pretty slowly in the twisties, and I would have to, conf you know, concur. However, if you're willing to plan your turns a little bit more in advance, if you don't mind uh, having to work at it a little bit, uh, it does handle quite nicely, and it will turn. It's just you have to work a little bit harder at it, so... Um, that's that. As far as, you know, taking off from a stoplight and racing a guy in a rice rocket or a hops rocket or a pasta rocket, ah, eh, forget it. You're not going to win those races. Um, which isn't to say it won't get up and go, but it, it's really, it's a, I think, just a result less of power and more of the way that it's geared. So, you know, that's a compromise for certain. Um, one other thing I've noticed is that as you start off and you're going and you hit around 2700 RPMs, I can't even talk today, through 3500 RPMs or so, there's kind of a grinding and 
vibration from the front. Of course, the faster you accelerate, the faster you, you go through that. Happens in every gear. Of course, in the higher gears, you're generally going through that a little bit quicker. You know, I brought that up to the dealership when I brought it in for its first service. Uh, they, of course, could not hear it. I'm um, just hoping that it's, you know, kind of a, a break-in issue that maybe everything is a little bit tight. But if I have to live with it for the life of the bike, it's not that big a deal. It's just a little bit of annoyance as long as it doesn't, you know, contribute to some problems further down the road. You know, I can deal with it. Exhaust sounds pretty good, um, especially when you step on it twist it real hard it's got a real nice sounding exhaust uh, shifting uh, shifts smoothly I've had no issues missing gears occasionally have trouble getting into neutral from first or second you know at a stoplight but I find if you roll up a little bit that you you know generally get past that so what else uh, I can't think of anything. So overall, you know, what is my assessment of this bike? Um, I bought it f primarily to replace a Ducati Hyperstrada as a long-distance freeway machine because my commute to work is 55 miles uh, each way every day. And, you know, the Hyperstrada just wasn't really that comfortable for that period of distance you know especially since the gearing not quite the same as on this uh, very light easily bullied or you know bullied about by the wind so um, for what I use this bike for um, yeah it does an excellent job and I'm pretty happy that I bought it especially since these things can be had for a pretty good price which makes them a, a decent value um, but if this was the only bike I could have because I do have a, another bike that I use to split the commute. I have a R1200 GS. Um, if I had to have only one bike um, and I had to choose between, say, for instance, this and the GS, uh, hands down, would be the GS because the GS is just can do so much more. And I take my GS off road from time to time. Uh, this bike, I would never take off-road I suppose you could but uh, nah <laughs> I'd hate to try and pick this pig up if I dropped it which uh, given my level of skill off-road I would probably would drop it so there you have it uh, if you're planning on buying one of these things I hope this review is uh, you know provided you some insight um, like I said overall pretty good bike but uh, you know there are some things that you have to consider so that's it hope you enjoy this